Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of FTB Skies Let's Play, where, as I said in the end of the last episode, we are heading into the nether. First, I'm going to get rid of the stick. I'm going to put these carrots in my backpack. I have a backpack full of carrots that is in auto-feeder mode, so I should not have to worry about food for quite some time. I should have my... Um, I thought I had a necklace at some point that like let me go through the portal faster. Yeah, right here, portal charm. Uh, I just need to probably make like one piece of gold armor of some kind. Uh, just boots are cheap. Uh, just in case, because I don't want to keep getting attacked by piglins. So we'll see. So I. I'm going to have to fly through the nether to try and find anything, any signs of life anywhere. Uh, but I do have a matter receiver with me and a flux point. So we are going to put those down when we find somewhere. Uh, I also have a builder's gadget. I probably should have grabbed some like cobblestone or something. So let me do that really quick. Just some building material of any kind. Um, let's say like four stacks of cobblestone should be fine. And I've got my jetpack on. So we are just going to pick a direction. Let's just say north. Why not? We'll just head north. So I'm just going to fly until I see land. And then we'll see where we go from there. I flew around for quite some time in the nether in just a straight line, didn't find anything. So I looked it up. I've tried not to look up too much stuff in this series, but I've gotten to a point where there's like a lot of stuff I don't know. So we'll, we'll, it's touch and go right now. So I figured out that I can make this. So an eye of legend. So I just need an eye of ender and some diamond. Hopefully I have some diamond. Okay, yeah. So, because I ran out, I think, at the end of last episode. Uh, Eye of Ender. Let me just grab one of those. And some diamond. It was one, two, three, four. Gets me an Eye of Legend. And then that Eye of Legend can help me find Sky Villagers, which I'm pretty sure that's one right there. But if I go into the Nether... It'll tell me the direction of nether villages. So. Did it go that way? So it's there's a cooldown. Alright, so it looks like it's going that way. So I'm going to fly that way. I'm going to go back really quick and I'm going to charge up my... Um, my thing well we'll see we'll see how far i can go and if i find it before i run out of charge then great so we will start flying off in this direction every so often i will throw this guy i have an angel block don't i because i stole the angel block from the middle hello I stole the angel block from the center of this thing, so I have an angel block. So I'm going to bring my angel block with me. So that way I can just place it in the middle of the sky and find what I'm looking for. Oh, or I can... Uh, please still be there. Maybe? Yeah, okay. So let's let's trade with this guy. Not you, you can die. <laughs> Alright, let's trade with this guy real quick. Let's just see what he's got to offer. Please face my direction and don't throw anything that you're about to trade me off the edge. Okay, cool. So that was a forcing it. So I'm just going to give you a whole stack and we'll just see what your trades are. Are you going to keep just... Which, which direction are you going to throw? You're going to throw in my direction. Okay, so we'll, we'll just give him a whole stack, try not to keep picking it up. I think I need to take my magnet off, maybe. 
But we'll just, yeah, I need to take my magnet off. And we'll see what this guy gives us. All right, guys, there it is. Two Nomad B spawn eggs. Thank you, good sir. It was a pleasure doing business with you. And we got some actually, like, some interesting stuff. Um, that might come in useful later. I really don't know. So we've got some uh, Terrera scrolls. Uh, we just got that floating thermal lily. We got some wither roses, which I think might come in handy for like mob farming. Uh, wither skull fragments, which are good. How many of those do I even need to do anything? I need six to make a wither skeleton skull. Hmm. Maybe stick around at some point and keep trading with this guy but for right now i appreciate it because now we can come back here and we can finally so nomad b so a sulfur b comes from a coal b and a magmatic b coal b comes from blazing and leaf cutter please tell me i needed this nomad for something i know i needed him for something coal for the blazing okay so magmatic plus nomaded okay cool i was like if i just did all of that days worth of work for nothing i was going to be very upset uh so b cages uh my nomad b is in here two nomad b spawn eggs yay so i'm going to drop you down and drop you down but i'm gonna pick you up and then where is my magmatic i have a magmatic bee somewhere um glowing neon blue appetite my magmatic he might be in here yeah okay so if i just put that there that should be my magmatic so magmatic plus nomadic uh and i have an extra diamond bee in here which i'm going to put in here because i've been producing diamonds i'm pretty sure these got yeah they grow up inside the cage okay cool so i can take you out uh blazing bee equals nomadic plus magma or nomad plus magmatic so nomad plus magmatic should get me a blazing and i'm gonna put you in there so you can come out let me get my um pouch and we'll try and speed this process up a little bit so that should get us a blazing and then I can take you out and then blazing plus leaf cutter. So I know I have a leaf cutter in here somewhere. Leaf cutter, blazing plus leaf cutter equals coal. And then coal plus magmatic. equals sulfur sulfur bees and i'm gonna get five of those and then i'm just gonna put them in another one of these and they probably need sulfur i'm gonna guess they probably need like a sulfur block to produce oh it's been so long and i could have just done that in so many easier ways all right, so I'm just going to keep doing this until I have five sulfur bees, and then I'm going to make another hive, and I'm going to import that into the system, and we should be good on sulfur. And then, once we have that, I have an interesting way to, like, get a lot out of your sulfur usage. I kind of... It's not cheating, it's part of the game, but I'll show you my idea as long as I have a starting infinite amount of sulfur, I can do what I think I can do. And we'll we'll get to that in a minute. But for right now, 
I've got to make some more bee cages, and we'll figure all that out. Last sulfur bee goes into the system, and now you guys are children, but eventually you should start making sulfur comb, and sulfur comb should make its way here, get processed, and turned into sulfur. So I need to go up to my generator, and I need to turn this guy back on. I, I had a system earlier that I was trying to do. It didn't work the way that I wanted it, so I'm not going to worry about that. As long as you are still getting sulfur, dust. So, all right, sulfur combs are coming in. You're getting sulfur dust. You are being crafted where? You're being crafted in the crushing factory is crushing one sulfur at a time into this. Okay, now we can get into the weird system that I think I can do. It's gonna, it's gonna take some, some finagling. It's gonna take a little bit of like weird back and forth, but basically, I figured out if you take a sulfur ore, okay, usage, and you take that in a pulverizer, you get six, sometimes seven, additional chance 50%. So every other one-ish, you get an extra seventh piece of sulfur. I can then take that sulfur, crush it into sulfur dust, and then it takes five sulfur dust in a sulfur, I mean, in a combiner to make one sulfur ore, which means every few iterations, I'll end up with one, if not two extra sulfur pieces. <laughs> it's cheaty and it might work if I have an infinite source of sulfur dust. I tried it every so often, eventually entropy does kick in and it will the, the system will pause but if i can keep producing five sulfur dust every so often i think it's okay so i'm gonna pull it from the ex no i'm gonna pull it from okay let me give give me a minute to think about how i'm actually gonna do this and then we will come back with the plan rather than record the whole system building which I did but it turned out to just be a little bit longer than I expected it to be so I'm just gonna walk through the system itself you put the ore into the pulverizer so sulfur ore goes into the pulverizer crushes down into six or seven of the um, pieces and then that goes into the crusher which takes those ones turns it into uh, dust so that sulfur dust then splits itself half of it goes in no I'm sorry no I, I took away that part so this is just going to consistently get cobblestone and sulfur dust is going to go in here so you see right now it's got three just kind of waiting here so when it gets two more two more are going to go in here it's going to make a ore that ore is going to come out of here into here back into the pulverizer that's then going to turn it into like i said five or six then it's going to go into the crusher those five or six and then it's going to crush it down into the or six or seven that it needs to be and then that six or seven is going to come over here and get put down into the chemical oxidizer so you see right there one just got put in so it's gonna crush this down. I still need to put augments in here to speed this process up, but it's gonna go from here. It's gonna get crushed down. And then when it crushes down, see it's made seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then those seven are gonna come in here and it's gonna make my sulfur dioxide, which is then going to come over here uh, to make my sulfur trioxide, which is then gonna come over here to make my hexafluoride, which is going to make fissile fuel. Is it a long process? Yes. Is it a necessary process? Probably not, uh, because it probably would be so much easier to just funnel sulfur dust from the bees directly into the system. But I thought this was a fun, cool little way to like sort of get more out of it, I think, in the long run. I think it gets more 
I, it may not. I don't know. So my bees over here are just going to be producing. Uh, they are all adults now, so they should be producing more. Uh, they have a high productive rate, high productive rate. All of them have a high productivity. So I don't know that there's a way to start making that into like very high. Because I know that you can get very high. See, like he's medium. That's high. These don't have any like abilities. So these are all high. Medium, high, and then like high here. So there's like very low, low, medium, high, very high, I think are the ways that it goes. And I could try to produce bees that have a high productivity and then use that high productivity and try, or a very high productivity and try to like get the genetics out of them and then feed that to a bee that could potentially then get me a very high productive rate that is something to potentially look into that could be something that i'll look into between episodes and if it's worth actually making an episode of i'll do it otherwise you'll just i'll come back and you'll see that i have very productive bees here so i could also at this point breed these together to just make another bee and then just have a separate uh advanced beehive with more sulfur bees and then potentially another one with more of the flowerite bees and just try to make as many of those as I can to continue this process and just make it faster. But for right now, that's infinite sulfur and infinite flowerite. Like those are the two things that I needed to basically keep this system running. And it's got enough of a backlog that I'm not worried about it running out. If it does run out, we will definitely look into a better system of how to do it but for right now so this is all gone and that's mainly because of the fact that the moment sulfur hits the system it comes in here i think i saw one other way to potentially get like a lot of sulfur but i don't know so the sulfur comb in this centrifuge all right, so the use is here. So in a centrifuge up there gets me sulfur dust in a mixing bowl over here. Like this little mixer right here with a blaze burner would get me the dust. I mean, the uh, just the sulfur itself. But I is unless it gets me more than one, which I don't think it will there's no point because then it's just still a one-to-one -one ratio and I would still have to worry about crushing it down. So I see no reason to do that. Um, the next episode, I don't know exactly what we plan to do unless the next episode is going to be those bees. And I think somewhere along here, I broke my system and I need to be able to get... Oh, I took the blaze out. That's right. So uh, I need my pattern that's going to get me blaze rods. This, this is something that I can be doing off camera. But anyway, uh, thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all in the next episode. And until then, I will see you all later.